Hi, Robot Man here. Have you noticed? There's two Lego Spike apps now. Which one does what? Which one should I use? Let's have a look, eh? There's an app that's called Lego Spike 3, and there's an app that's called Lego Spike Legacy. Which is which? Which is better? Why is there two? Well, let's have a look at both of them. I happen to have them both on my computer, and I shall open them both up right now, so you can see both of them at once. On the right hand side we've got Legacy and on the left hand side we've got the new Spike Prime 3 app. Well it's not just Spike, it's Spike, not just Spike Prime, it's Spike. You've got Essential and you've got Spike Prime in both of them. So that it still looks very much the same. Legacy is really the, the newest version or the newest um, version of the old version, if that makes sense. And Spike 3 is like a beta version which is uh, really cool and but it doesn't have quite all the features of the old version so i'm going to try and outline the difference now in the spike prime uh, legacy version it looks very similar to what it, uh, you might be used to if you've never used these apps before and you don't want to use python i'm australian so i say python uh, then i'd use lego i'd use spike prime 3 okay but if you want to use python and um, perhaps you've got old files that you want to use, then you might want to stick with the legacy. Because when you do a new project in legacy, you can choose icon blocks, word blocks, or Python. But if you do a new project in Spike Prime 3, you've only got word blocks and icon blocks without the Python. So if you're a Python freak, you want to stick to the legacy. Okay, that's the first little tip I have for you. But let's just, I'm just going to open up a previous file because I'm going to, I've got a very simple little bit of code here to show you the difference between the two. Okay, so at first glance, they look very similar, don't they? Almost identical. But you'll notice one little thing, that the buttons are greyed out unless you are connected. In the old version, in Legacy, uh, the buttons are coloured. And uh, I had kids in my class clicking on these saying it's not working. And they didn't realize that they had to connect first sometimes. Now it's really obvious if you haven't connected because you can't even press play. Um, when you do connect, it connects a lot faster. So I'm going to show you the process of connecting using Legacy. If I press this one, Robot A, and you have to wait quite a lot, few seconds for it to turn on. Okay. If I press connect now, and then you press the Bluetooth button, it takes quite a while. Finally connected. Okay, that's not too bad, but you'll notice with the new program, if I press, uh, if I turn it on first, watch how quickly it turns on, because the hub has been updated as well. Press connect, and it says have you updated the hub uh, if you haven't there'll be a white light there like the old days if you have it should be green like it is now on mine it connects almost instantaneously really fast so going back to legacy when i press play you'll see that it takes a little while for the pr program to run huh didn't run at all. You know why? Because I forgot to tell it the, the voters are plugged into B. Classic rookie error. Okay, press play. See how long it takes. A good two seconds, I reckon. Now, if you press play on uh, the new one, on Spike 3, it's almost instantaneous. Almost instantaneous. And I like this little play button animation here because it shows you that the program is still running because it's got a yellow little line there. If you press stop, it all goes away. So I like how it's greyed out after it stops too because there's only one option now is to play. There's another difference that you might have noticed is that you can only download your code. In the older version, in Legacy, you can actually stream it or you can download it. Now streaming did have its glitchy problems. And this downloads so fast, it's almost like streaming anyway. So I don't know if they'll add streaming later. They might, but I think uh, I always downloaded the code anyway. But it's very quick to download. It downloaded that quickly. If I want to download it on this one, it just takes a few seconds longer to download the code onto the hub. Okay. 
So um, that's one of the main differences. Also, you'll notice that you always could add some extension blocks down the bottom left here. You could click down here, add the movement blocks on both and go back. You'll notice that it's the traditional quite a few pink blocks to pick from now, the extra ones. But if you scroll down menu, you'll see that there's only three. Okay, they might add some more later. By the time you watch this video, there might already be some more there. I don't know if they're going to update that or not. Or they might have just realized that half of these are pretty useless anyway. So to look at, it's very similar. Uh, obviously, there's a little green tick up here when you're connected, whereas uh, Legacy, there's nothing to indicate that you get connected apart from the fact that it's not yellow anymore. So it's just a little bit more obvious that you have connected. Um, but generally, there's not a lot of difference unless you really want to do Python. The catch is, though, if you install Spike 3, the catch is that uh, you have to update each hub uh, separately, individually. So as you can see, my one on the left that's been updated has got a green light now, and that means that I've actually gone to the trouble of updating the hub. And I believe when I actually updated the hub, I did it through my iPad. I didn't actually have to plug it into a computer. I downloaded the app and installed it on my iPad. And then I just connected to my hub and it said I needed to update it. But then afterwards, I tried running or connecting Legacy to my newly updated hub and it wouldn't connect. So... My advice is don't update it to three unless you are 100% sure that you don't want to go back because it is a bit tricky to go back and that'll be for another video. But for now, I think it's worth it. I worth it. It's worth updating it just so the programs run a lot quicker. The code runs more quickly and it's just, it seems gonna, it's going to be more reliable and they've, they've done away with a few of the bells and whistles. So if you scroll through the programs here, you'll see there's a bit of an animation. But if you look on the, um, the newly updated app of Spike 3, there's no animation between scrolling between things. So that's probably just saved a, a fraction of RAM. <laughs> when you run the program, it's really quick from there. See that? Really quick. Where this takes a second or so to get going. Okay. But when you want to turn it off, turns off pretty quickly but here it's just a little bit longer and it makes noises maybe it's the same time to turn it off it's just they don't waste time and mucking around with all the sounds but see how quickly that turns on it turns on pretty much um, straight away whereas this one you've got to wait at least five ten seconds for it to come on yeah it's all just a lot quicker This takes a little bit second for that code. So the advantage are that the code is downloaded quicker, but it also runs quicker, okay? And the real advantage is that it connects a lot quicker too. So it's a lot quicker to connect, a lot quicker to download, a lot quicker to run. I hope that's uh, good advice for you. I hope you've decided which one you want to go for. If you've never used Spike Prime before, I would just use Spike 3. Um, because it's the newest and bestest. But if you really want to do Python, or if you really want to run old programs that you've made, old bits of code, um, without having to rewrite them all again, then maybe just stick with Legacy for now. Adios, amigos.